right. Okay, guys. How about... Uh, how about we stand up really fast? We just had lunch, didn't we? We're going we're gonna to do a little gratitude, humility, and joy here. All right. Who knows what direction is south? Thank you. Let's face south. What, what's up in the south right now? The sun. Thank you, sun. Let's all say, thank you, sun. Yeah. Can you feel the sun has rays continually streaming to us, through us? You guys feel that? Wonderful. 163,000 terawatts of energy continually streaming upon our planet. Never stops, even at nighttime. That's a lot. Thank you, sun. All right, guys. Well, if you need to get a little stretch in or whatever while you're up, go for it. We're going to have some fun. So I want to ask, has anybody made a new friend today or met a new person today? Yeah, wonderful. How fun. Isn't that great? Okay, now how many of you are on some form of social media? Yeah, pretty good number. All right. Well, how about if we make a billion new friends right now? Would you like that? Okay, we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to do that by sharing some soil with each other. You can just pass this around, hold it, touch it, hold it. You'll get this amazing side effect. Your serotonin levels might go up a little as well. We, we know the science behind this now too. My gosh, but of course our ancestors knew this all along, didn't they? So we are talking about the Ecosystem Summit. We are here talking about soil, talking about trees, talking about water, talking about bees. In other words, we're here talking about relationships. Well, that's fun. And I want to share with you a thought. Now is the time. And we are the people. We live at a moment, believe it or not, that many of our ancestors from all around the world anticipated in different ways. And we are the people. We are carrying inside of our DNA special information that has been transmitted through countless generations. And some of us may not believe that to be true. And guess what? It doesn't depend on whether we believe it to be true, to be true. Funny how truth works like that. We heard this morning, we are facing so many challenges, aren't we? My gosh, oh, there's so many. It's heavy. You almost can feel this gravity. Who feels they're accelerating toward the center of the earth? <laughs> wow. And what do we need when we're dealing with great challenges? Because Lord knows we've dealt with great challenges before, haven't we? as a species, as a society, haven't we? And what do we mobilize when we're dealing with great challenges? It's up here in the green. We need resources, don't we? We need a lot of resources. We need resources like hope. We need resources like wisdom. And we need resources like action. By golly, the good news about these resources is they are renewable, and we get to create and generate those together right now, today. Indeed, great challenges require great resources. One of the things that my friends and I from the Why on Earth community want to share with you all is a free download, the Thriving and Sustainability Guide. You can go to whyonearth.org, and right there on the homepage, you'll see uh, to download this. That'll give you great resources. It'll give you some life hacks as to how to cultivate and maintain higher levels of serotonin production in your body. For example, while you're also doing great work of healing, regeneration, stewardship, and sustainability in the community and in the world. So make sure you check that out. What's the context? The Anthropocene, right? Who's heard of this term, Anthropocene? Yeah. Yeah. So we live in a time when our impacts as a species on the planet are of such magnitude, of such great significance that our geology friends are now calling this point in time in the history of the world the age of the humans, the Anthropocene. You might know the word anthropology, right? Indeed, we are, as a species, changing the 
chemistry of the atmosphere, aren't we? We are changing the pH of the ocean, aren't we? There's one ocean, right? We like to call it a lot of different things in a lot of different places. Some places it's nice and warm, some places it's cold. One ocean. We're moving mountains, aren't we? In the name of mineral production and energy production. We are having dramatic effect on this planet. So we are in this age of the Anthropocene. This is the context. As you heard this morning, we have incredible complex and large scale challenges. And our friends at the Stockholm Resiliency Institute, echoing some comments that were made earlier this morning, they have identified that of the biggest systemic risks we face as a global society, climate change, it might surprise you, may not be the first on the list. In fact, they identify that biodiversity loss, you can see represented by this large red wedge, represents perhaps the greatest systemic risk we're facing on a global scale. We understand that rates of species loss currently are some 1,000 times the normal background rate we would expect to see. We understand that from a geologic perspective, we are experiencing species die off, a great event, an extinction event, the likes of which we've only seen five times previously in the fossil record, the geologic history of this planet. This is the first one we know to be caused or at least significantly contributed to by the activities of one of the species on the planet, right? Many of those other extinction events were caused by large objects striking us from outer space or massive volcanism, right? This is the Anthropocene, this is the context. Can you see this? All right? Sure glad the hole isn't on our end, right? We're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. So given the context, it seems to me we probably need some superpowers. What do you guys think? Yeah, and we have some, don't we? What do you guys uh, think our greatest superpower is in the context of what we're talking about today? <laughs> Janine nailed it. Say again. Yeah, people power. Anyone else? Wisdom, thank you. Innovation, yeah. Okay, here's what I'll posit to you all, as Janine uh, just mentioned. I would posit our greatest superpower right now is love. And part of what's really fun about the fact that we're all alive right now together is that we get to cultivate love together. We get to cultivate love toward ourselves, toward each other in our community, and toward our entire living planet. Now, who, who's heard about this thing going on where we might try to colonize Mars or the moon? Or... Fabulous. So exciting. We need really good spaceships, don't we? Well, guess what? We have the most marvelous, the most miraculous, the most sophisticated spaceship any of us humans are ever going to even begin to imagine to possibly dream up. We have that already. So for our friends in places like Silicon Valley and others who are thinking perhaps we need to terraform some other rocky uh, objects in space, hey, good idea. Let's get started in practice. We have so many industrial wastelands, don't we? We have so many urban environments that are absolutely hostile to the biosphere, don't we? So let's get started. It'll be fun. When we're talking about the context of the spaceship that we share, we can borrow this fun word from the Greeks, oikos, or ekos, if we have any Greek scholars in the room. Now, who's heard of this word oikos? Yeah? Good name for a yogurt, yogurt brand, right? Right? So, okay. So oikos comes from the ancient Greek, and it means home, right? So our home back in ancient Greece, we might call an oikos. Within that home, we would probably have a room toward the front that we would also call an oikos, where we would receive our neighbors and friends. So embedded in this concept of home is the concept of relationship, 
the concept of community. Now, I find it really curious, being a word nerd, that this word oikos is the etymological origin of two really interesting words we use today a lot. One is ecology, one is economy. When we actually understand what we mean when we use those words, we understand those words are essentially the same thing. They tell us, they are describing how we take care of our home, how we conduct the business of our home, how we steward our home. So I love having conversations with my economist and business friends about that one. You might enjoy, by the way, some of the articles and videos we have at whyonearth.org because we have a lot of fun with this. So we're talking about our home. We are talking about taking care of stewarding oikos at three scales. The scale of self, the scale of community, and the scale of this spaceship we all share. Good thing we have superpowers. Now it seems to me that in all the complex issues that we face currently, we might, in a sense, be able to boil down our calls to action to a few relatively straightforward categories. So we could decarbonize energy, fabulous. Now, wouldn't it be great if we had a, a nuclear fusion power plant that was of such a scale it could power our whole city, our whole state, our whole country, our whole planet? And wouldn't it be cool if this nuclear fusion power plant were located far enough away from humans that it didn't really pose a great risk? Wow, we have one, don't we? We have one, the sun, wonderful, great. So decarbonizing energy, that's happening, that's fun. Recarbonizing soil, that's where each one of us has so much more we can do in our day-to-day -day lives. I'll talk about that a little bit further in just a minute. We also can detoxify our environments and detoxify our homes. Where do we start? Look in the garage. What stuff might we spray out in the yard? Let's get rid of those. Let's dispose of those properly and never buy those ever again. How about it? What might we find under, under our kitchen sink or in our bathroom? Cleaners of all types, right? Let's take a look. Let's make decisions as if we are expert stewards exercising our superpower of love each and every moment. I find it kind of funny that sometimes, you know, in the morning we'll jump out of bed and take off our pajamas or whatever and jump in the shower and get wet and lather up with some sort of a carcinogen and then rinse off and jump out and dry off with a towel and then put all kinds of moisturizing carcinogens all over too. All right? We can do a little better probably, right? These are choices. No one's forcing us to do this. Nobody. This is each of us. We have so much power now, so much power. Our access to information, our ability to communicate is of orders of potency that kings could not even dream of a few centuries ago. This is amazing. You know, we used to communicate at the speed of a horse, didn't we? Or perhaps the speed of the wind pushing a ship across the water. Now we communicate at virtually the speed of light this is amazing, each one of us, amazing. Of course, finally, after detoxifying, we get to collaborate with our billions of new friends and regenerate ecosystems. My gosh, what a party. The soil, yeah? Let's hear it for the soil. Can we give a shout out for the soil? All right. Upon whom we all depend for life, every single one of us, whether we believe it or not, So we have a choice right now, y'all. <laughs> and we get to determine what this future looks like. We and a whole lot of other folks all over the planet, right? And it is the culmination of all of our day-to-day -day choices that is going to determine what this future looks like. So I'm excited because I know you all have these superpowers. Quick comment, those of you who know me know I love food. And you also know I have a couple of children. 
wonderful, brilliant children. And I know I'm a little weird, and I know this is Boulder. Shout out to all our friends, by the way, who are tuning in. I heard California, Idaho, Nebraska, Oregon. Thank you, friends. Now, I know this is Boulder, and I know I'm a little weird, but I don't particularly want to feed food to my children that has been sprayed with chemicals by somebody wearing a hazmat suit. I, I know that's weird. Okay, these are our choices. This is all going to start with one thing, you. So we get to detoxify. We get to choose to be great stewards in relationship with soil and with other humans and with other creatures all around the planet through our food choices every day. How many of you have eaten at a restaurant? How many have heard of the market economy? Okay, so when you order a dish at a restaurant, how many signals are you sending to the market economy? You're telling the world, I want more of X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Often a single meal at a restaurant will send 20, 30 separate signals to the market economy. Every time we choose organic, period, we are telling the world we want more organic. We are telling the world we want to take care of soil in increasing quantity at increasing scale. Now check this out. Who's heard of Ben Franklin? Who's heard of this food fad, organic food, right? What do you think they called organic food in Ben Franklin's time? Yeah. Who's heard of the Egyptians, ancient Egyptians? Guess how they did food? Organic, organic, organic. The Greeks, organic. The Romans, organic. On through the Middle Ages, organic. Right through Ben Franklin's time, the founding of this country, organic. Right up until just the last few generations, suddenly we're in this big experiment called industrial chemical agriculture, right? This gives us the perspective we need to have to understand what are the anomalies and aberrations and what are the time-tested trends. We're going to get to the soil. Hemoglobin chlorophyll. Plants have chlorophyll. They convert sunlight to energy we can use. That chlorophyll molecule is the same molecule as our hemoglobin in our blood, with one exception. The plants have a magnesium atom in the middle of their chlorophyll molecule. We have an iron atom in the middle of our hemoglobin molecule. We are related. We're cousins with all those plants. This is a map showing groundwater pollution from agriculture activity. Okay? We're talking about water when we're talking about soil. We're talking about relationships. And with soil, we literally have at our fingertips a miraculous, phenomenal transmutation of death back into life. This is what keeps this spaceship running for us. And we have in our etymology in the Latin our word human, our word humus, soil, our word humor, and our word humility. So those four, if we're going to cultivate our superpowers, we'll keep those four at the forefront of our awareness. When we look at soil worldwide and we understand the carbon cycle as it relates between the atmosphere and the ground, we know that most of the carbon is in the ground. The amount that's in the atmosphere is a smaller amount than that in the ground. And if we were to, through soil building, sequester all of the fossil carbon we've released since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, right up through today, that would represent a 10% increase in the soil carbon worldwide. 10%. We get to build soil. We get to be the soil building species in these times. So we could say, let's take back the carbon, huh? We have some take back movements. Let's take back the carbon and put it in the ground where it belongs. So I just have a few more slides here. I want to tell you one of the things I'm so excited about that is being led by EcoCycle. Dan Mage, Marty Mage, is, where's Dan? Yes, thank, can you guys stand up please for leading this charge? Thank you. So in the springtime, 
in this community, EcoCycle is kicking off an effort that will involve hundreds and hundreds of families and households to do soil building in our yards, in our communities, to sequester carbon and to heal our places now. That's happening. So tune in, be a part of this. We're so excited about this. It's amazing. And I just want to read one thing before my final concluding message to you all. This is our soil stewardship pledge. I want to invite you to stand up real fast. And uh, apologize, I'm running a little long here, Brett. We'll, we'll do this quickly. We'll speak quickly. I'm inviting you to take the soil stewardship pledge, which you can also find on our website. So I'm going to say I, and then after that, we'll repeat our names. Ready? I, Aaron Perry, I believe that my connection with living soil is sacred. I promise to be a faithful steward of soil and thus of Mother Earth through my direct interactions with soil as well as the indirect influences of my personal choices and consumer demand. Doing great. I promise to be mindful of my impact upon soil every day. I will compost all of my organic kitchen scraps. I will grow plants inside and a garden outside. I will touch soil with my hands every day. I will gently and joyfully encourage others to do the same. I understand that soil building is a powerful way to reverse climate change. I understand that healthy, vibrant soil is key to nourishing food and clean water. I know that our existence as humans is dependent on soil. I vow to be an excellent soil steward and to help others to do the same. Now, that was wonderful. Thank you. You can get the text of this on the website. So envision our community and communities all over activating love-based stewardship, stabilizing climate, healing ourselves, and our world together. That's what we get to do. And as a final concluding statement, I want to share with you a letter from 100 years from now. This was written by Alex Steffen, whose image is up there. So this is coming to us from the year 2115. We live today on a healing planet. Yes, much has been lost, but much was saved or restored or reinvented. And what was saved and healed and made anew has become a powerful legacy. Those gifts became the seedbeds from which sprouted our new world. Those seeds of hope were saved and planted and tended to by people who made the decision that they would live as if the future mattered. As if nature mattered as if we mattered. These were visionary people, responsible people, courageous people. All around the world, our best ancestors took up the challenge of leaving a different, bolder legacy, one not of error and loss, but of leadership, stewardship, and innovation. 
On every continent and in every sea, some of our most important wild places were made safe. Ecological restoration was begun. Species were saved. In the face of planetary catastrophe, the tide was turned. If today, in the 22nd century, we live in an era of optimism and hope, it is because some of our ancestors, in the dawn of the 21st, lived in a time of clarity and commitment. When they understood the planetary crisis they faced, their answer was not cynicism or surrender, but to seek out others and together meet that crisis with action. When they rose in the morning, they put their hands not only to the common tasks of providing for their families and communities, but the exceptional work of honoring their kinship with those who would live in generations to come and laboring on our behalf to leave a bright green world. When they sat to eat together, they not only nourished their bodies, they nourished their connection to earth itself and reminded themselves that humanity lives within this planet, not apart from it. When they too counseled together, they felt the hopes of their children's children's children keeping them company. They made ambitious plans. When they rose to speak, they, not, they spoke not for themselves, but for human possibility and the renewed bounty of life on earth. Where these ancestors gathered, heroes gathered. And when they departed, they had given us back our future. Thank you.